Hi guys and welcome to another Mobile Monday. I'm really sorry that I couldn't post last Monday uh, but that was because I had sound issues in uh, the video I recorded so I couldn't actually use the footage. Um, but this time I'm going to be playing Ikemen Sengoku. It's another one of those dating games, I know. Uh, I, I Somehow I get them uh, recommended a lot on Facebook. I guess because I'm a woman. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to start the game. And yeah, it should start with a trailer. It's something about... Um, yeah, so 500 years in the past. Um, <laughs> I am going to be trying to play the game until I have um, met all the male characters so that I can, you know, give my opinion about them, about what they say or do. Um, and yeah, that's, I, depending on how long it takes for me to meet all of them, I might play more or less. So, it, it really depends. Um, but yeah, it looks like there are a lot of male characters to choose from. <laughs> so, yeah, that guy looks so creepy. He looks like he's the bad guy, you know? Like, they probably have some bad boys in there, but... <laughs> oh god. I don't know what the story is. Um, I know that you come from modern time and somehow you get lost in... Uh... Okay, uh, somehow you get lost in the past, I want to say. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Kyoto, present day. This is my first vacation on my own. But you know what? I feel great. Not a care in the world. Stretching my arms above my head. I was enjoying... A peaceful nighttime stroll through the city. I kept at it, sending my portfolio out time and time again, until it finally paid off. I'd gotten my dream job. Goodbye, mad grey cubicle. In a few days, I'll finally be a fashion designer. Because I'm a girl. And that's why I want to become a fashion designer. Yeah. And this is my reward. I'm going to get all the partying out of my system so I can focus on my new career. Walking with a spring in my step, I pulled a guidebook out of my purse. A traveler's guide to Japan's hottest warlords. I wouldn't call that a travel guide. I bought it because the title made me smile. The sexiest man of the single girl. <laughs> um, by the way, I'm sorry if I mispronounce any uh, Japanese names or terms. Like, I, I never studied Japanese. Deal with it. Traveler's Guide to Japan's Hottest Warlords. Okay. Kyoto's a hub of historical activity, and this book promised information on some good sightseeing spots. Yeah, if you call um, posters of hot warlords, uh, great sighting spots. Oh, the next line is voiced. I flicked through the pages, stopping when my eye fell upon a familiar name. The peerless warrior, Sanada Yukimura. I'm sorry, I tried to say it like he did, which I can't. I've heard of this guy. He was famous for... Nope. I can't remember. I'd always crammed for Japanese history last. Sadly, it showed in my test results. The one-eyed dragon. Date Masamune. He's cute. I'm more familiar with this one. There's been a bunch of historical dramas made about him. It's the eye patch. The one-eyed dragon. I love that name. And the eye patch is pretty sweet too. Too bad he's not from Kyoto. Ah oh, damn. He looks cute. We're definitely gonna meet him. 
Let's see, where's the closest famous place I can visit? That's what you do on holiday. You just say, what's the closest thing? <laughs> I don't. I just look up stuff. Here's one, a stone monument to Honoyi at the temple's original location. Devil King of the Sixth Heaven, Oda Nobunaga. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Opposite the map to the side was a page dedicated to the most famous man tied to that location. So this dude. He looks like he has attitude. Actually, they all did. Although the first one seemed really nice, the other two seem like they have an attitude. Nobunaga Oda is definitely someone I remember. He almost unified all of Japan under his rule. Well, Napoleon almost conquered all of Europe. Like seriously, you can put almost in front of everything. In the year 1582, betrayed by Mitsuhide Akeshi, Nobunaga committed suicide amidst the fiery wreckage of Honoyi. Or as I remember it, in 1582, Nobunaga's ambitions burned in a coup. Or a coup. Amused I could still remember that old mnemonic. That's not a mnemonic! A mnemonic would be if you make a word and then... or a phrase. I mean, that phrase doesn't count as a mnemonic because it's just as long as the fact itself. A mnemonic for this would be a word... Ah, oh, never mind. I followed the map to the place where Honoyi once stood. This is it? It's a simple, somber monument. And pretty small too. I wonder if Nobunaga would be disappointed. <laughs> I just stood and looked at it a moment. A man came up to the monument too. That he was wearing a lab coat in public made him immediately stand out. I would totally wear my, my white coat in public too, if that was a normal thing to do. Standing silently beside me, his eyes were fixed on the stone. He looks too young to be a doctor. Probably a med student. And what a serious expression he has. He was more intriguing than the monument. I couldn't help looking. Just then, a drop of cold rain fell on my nose. Raising my head to the sky, I noticed the dark grey clouds in sheets overhead. Oh no! The clouds suddenly broke open and tiny drops gave way to a downpour. What poor timing! Clear skies all day and all night, it said. Stupid weather report. Are you alright? Do you have an umbrella? I do, but it's back at my hotel. That's like saying, do you have something to eat? Yeah, I do. At my home. So you don't. You don't have an umbrella. I looked up into the man's eyes when... Huh? Oh, I never know who's speaking. Ah! A bolt of lightning touched down in front of us, shattering the stone monument. Oh, that sucks. That couldn't have just happened. I've never seen lightning that close before. Be careful, miss. Huh? He offered me a hand, but it appeared to bend and warp into darkness, eventually disappearing. I felt dizzy and instinctively squeezed my eyes shut. What's happening? Oh, this is awesome. Then the dizziness passed. I opened my eyes, only for them to be quickly obscured with streams of billowing hot smoke. Wait, what? It was raining. I was outside. How did I get here? And it's so smoky here. This place is on fire. Covering my mouth, 
I looked up to the suffocating smoke, but I couldn't see the man in the lab coat anywhere. Instead, I saw something unbelievable. What in the world? A man dressed in a suit of ancient Japanese armor lay asleep on the floor. Another man, holding some kind of walking stick, approached the sleeping man. Um, I don't think that's a walking stick. That's not a walking stick, it's a sword. Sparks from the flaming paper walls illuminated the sharp edge of the raised metal blade. Hey you, look out! I cried at the armored man. The man with the sword grew still. Then he turned and fled. I crouched beside the unconscious man and shook him urgently. He finally woke, eyelids lifting lazily. How can you fucking sleep through a fire? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who are you? No time for introductions, come on, let's get you out of here. There's a building on fire and a man out to kill you. We need to get out of here now. Take my hand. He took my hand into his powerful one. I held tight and hauled him to his feet. I wasn't sure who he was, but I didn't want to see anyone hurt. Or worse, we ran out, we ran for our lives through the fire. I'm amazed we made it out, but somehow we did. The building behind us, which seemed to be a temple, was being engulfed by uncontrollable flames. I have to be dreaming, right? Someone tried to do away with me while I slept? Audacious, but foolish. Killing my guards and getting that close to me is an autumn matter. You there, woman, let go of me. Oh, sorry. I let go and pulled my hand back. The man I'd rescued looked me over thoughtfully. You saved my life. You may be some girls the monks snuck in for amusement, but I owe you my thanks. Did that motherfucker just call me a whore? Maybe you should go fuck yourself. Really, I must have missed all the amused monks in the massive fire we just escaped. I don't know how I got in here. Who exactly have I just saved? He was dressed like a star in a samurai drama, and spoke like one too. His eyes were proud and brutal. But I could tell by the make of his clothes that they were authentic. As authentic as the sword hanging on his belt. What are you staring at? Surely you know who I am. I really don't. You saved me without knowing who I am, not expecting reward or favor? So be it. I shall tell you my name. I am the man who will rule all under the sun. Actually, you really don't need to tell me. What? I don't want to know. I get the feeling that whatever he's going to say, I am not going to like it. You're a curious one, woman. No one's ever spoken so impudently to me before. He let out a loud, amused laugh that echoed far into the night. I'm sorry. Is anything that's happening right now funny? And wow, that wicked smile could kill a kitten. You intrigue me, which is almost as worthy of praise as saving my life. I am the Lord of Azuchi Castle and Daimyo of Owari, Nobunaga Oda. So, Devil King of the Sixth Heaven, Nobunaga Oda. Nobunaga Oda? He just said his name was Nobunaga Oda. My mouth hanging open in shock, I turned towards the gate of the burning temple. A sign on the gate was engraved with the unmistakable name 
Hono ni. Pardon me for asking something strange, but what year is it? It is 1582. Why? In year 1582, betrayed by Mitsuhide Akeshi, Nobunaga committed suicide amidst the fiery wreckage of Honoyi. I've got to be dreaming this. Moving mechanically, I raised my hand to my cheek and pinched hard. Okay, that hurt. There goes the dream theory. But does that mean I really went back in time to the night Nobunaga died? What are you pinching yourself for? I've given my name. It's your turn. Hey! The self-proclaimed Nobunaga took a full step forward and took my chin in his hand, forcing me to meet his eyes. Give me your name. Le Sien, then. A good name. Glad you approve. Now let go of me. Oh yeah, I still like holding my chin like this. Uh, probably like this. I'm like, ah, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> okay. I brushed off his hand and put some distance between us. I desperately need to figure out what's going on here. My head was spinning and I was starting to shake. And that was before I heard a large group of coming our way. Nobunaga, my lord, you're safe. Is that the, be is that the betrayer? Who's this now? A man arriving at the front of a unit of soldiers rushed towards us. Mitsunari, why are you here? Where is Hideyoshi? Lord Hideyoshi sent me ahead. He should be here shortly. The man called Mitsunari took in the side of the burning temple with a frown. We received information about an assassination attempt. It appears to have been true. I had my men search the grounds, but whoever it was had already fled. If I may ask, who is this? I saw the two of you leave the temple together. Le Sien, present yourself to my subordinates. Um, how about no? How about fuck you? Okay, I'm really going to have trouble with doing different voices for everyone. Nobunaga indicated Mitsunari with a nod and then waited. I glanced sideways at Nobunaga like, what the fuck? Are you expecting me to do? <laughs> He's got a major attitude. I don't care if he almost united the country or what. I'm sorry, did I miss the part where I became a subordinate too? I don't have to follow your orders. Then you're choosing to disobey me? His glare was sharp as a knife, and I felt felt my body grew colder, 10 degrees colder. Yikes, okay, he is intimidating. Please, this is on me. It was rude of me not to introduce myself first. He's a cool guy, I like him. I like him, he's friendly. My name is Mitsunari Ishida. I serve at the side of Lord Hideyoshi, Lord Nobunaga's right-hand man. So you're like the subordinate of the subordinate. Got it. He sounds a bit feminine. He's also drawn a bit feminine, I guess. Nice to meet you, I'm Le Sien. See if you're friendly, you get my name. Or if you, like, grab my chin, then I will tell you my name too, apparently. Mitsunari seems kind, which is a nice change of pace. And his name seems familiar too. 
He's also gorgeous. Like a model. I would love to design clothes for him. I don't know who she is, but she woke me up and saw me to safety. She did. I can't thank you enough for protecting our Lord's life. Oh, I just did it without thinking. Like if I knew he was that much of a prick, I totally would have left him. Totally. But what brought you here tonight? You don't appear to be a nun. And your dress is unusual. Are you from abroad? Actually, I'm from a different time than yours altogether. Because everyone's going to believe me when I say that. What? I'm sure it's going to sound implausible, but I might as well get everything out in the open. I come from 500 years in the future. <laughs> they stared at me in shock and then disbelief. She's a storyteller too. Although I've never heard such an absurd tale. You poor thing. The smoke from the fire was very disorienting, I'm sure. Really? Neither of them are even considering it? I guess I'd have trouble believing it too. I really am from the future though. Sit down over there and get some fresh air. Someone will bring you a change of clothes. Hmm? I didn't even notice, but it's true, my clothes are a wreck. My shirt was stained to the elbows with suit, and the hem of my skirt was burned through in spots. Sexy. <laughs> Once you're freshened up, you'll feel much better. I'm so I'm giving you such a gay voice, I feel. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. But even I sound manlier than he does. When I gave him a quick bow, Mitsunari took my hands in his, holding them until a soldier came up with a bundle. Like what, are you afraid that I'm going to slap someone if you don't hold my hands like this? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit... Well, then again, it seems very kind to do that, like he's trying to comfort me. Which is a bit strange as well. You're a bit too eager, okay? Now, let's get you into these, shall we, Lady Lucien? Not a eunuch, are you? So, uh, I'll do that by myself? Leave me the fuck alone? Alright. Once I'd finished changing, I stepped out of the tent. Mitsunari guided me to the center of the hastily assembled camp. Wait right here. I'll bring you a warm cup of good clean water to clear your throat. With Mitsunari gone... <laughs> I said Mitsunari. Mitsunari gone. The only other person nearby was Nobunaga. Well, that sucks. You clean up well. Get your pervy ass out of here. Not very good at complimenting people, is he? Um, I'm going to be honest, they always say women go for bad boys. Um, I kind of get that. The thing is, I wouldn't in real life. But like fictional characters, yeah, they, they have something. But real life, probably not. You know, that was just a thought that kind of surfaced. I didn't care for the way his eyes lingered on me. I turned and kept my gaze on the entrance, waiting for Mitsunari, because he's friendly. Smoke from the temple was starting to clear. Mitsunari's troops must have put out the fire. It's suddenly easy to breathe now. I took a breath of cool night air. Someone parted the curtain and entered the camp, but it wasn't Mitsunari. Here comes boy number three! Oh, you look treacherous. My lord, I see you are well. Mitsuhide. 
Mitsuhide? Mitsuhide Akeshi? The person who betrayed Nobunaga and started this whole incident? I knew it. I hurried here when I heard about the attack, but it seems there was nothing for me to worry about. The secretive schema. Akechi Mitsuhide. You worry? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I've never seen you sweat. As I watched Nobunaga smile at the man I knew as his betrayer, another person burst through the curtains. Lord Nobunaga, are you injured? Why did I give him like a sort of half Scottish accent? Hideyoshi, the only injury I suffered is to my pride in letting my assailant escape. I see. The eloquent altruist, Hideyoshi Toyotomi. And now Hideyoshi Toyotomi shows up. And we are spoken. Have we met? Did I say that out loud? Well, it's not like I expected to meet two of Japan's unifiers both in the same night. Let her be. Her name is Lesien. Oh yes, and she saved my life. You saved Nobunaga's life. And you're such a slender thing. But it appears your courage makes up for that. This eyebrows, man. That's a scary smile. I hope I didn't just get added to someone's list. Mitsuhide, what are you doing here? I was wondering the same thing. I didn't know you were in Kyoto. What about the campaign? When I heard about the threat on Lord Nobunaga's life, I dropped everything to come here. But I never heard anything about you being in Kyoto. Are you implying something? Can you swear before our lord you weren't plotting anything? So everyone knows he's up to no good. He's one of those people, everyone knows it. Mitsuhide didn't answer him. The two locked eyes the two locked eyes, tension filling the space between them. And I'm just standing there, me and Nobunaga are standing there like... I, I, I know nothing. Hideyoshi is already suspicious that Mitsuhide is responsible for the attack. All men have secrets in these chaotic times. Are you saying you act with no ambition of your own? Stop being evasive. Confess. Hideyoshi's eyes flared. He gripped his sword, ready to draw. I was hoping for another nice one, but he's not as friendly as his looks suggest. If I find you played any part in this attack on our lord Mitsuhide, I'll show you no mercy. I don't think it was him. What? I really don't want to get between them. Then again, I don't want to see bloodshed either. I caught a glimpse of the man who attacked Nobunaga, um, Lord Nobunaga. But the drape of his clothes was all wrong. Because I'm a fashion designer, I know that shit. Plus, Mitsuhide is spotless. I don't know who it was, but Mitsuhide wasn't in that temple. Or you know, he had a change of clothes with him. The Sien, was it? Stay out of this. We'll settle things with you later and learn why you've schemed to get so close. <laughs> close? So close. So close. To Lord Nobunaga. I knew this was going to get me in trouble. Excuse me, I was there by chance. I'm not a schemer here. Enough, Hideyoshi. Regardless of what brings me to Hide here, I am alive and well. My apologies, Lord Nobunaga. 
Hideyoshi immediately let go of his sword, and his hand relaxing somewhat. That got through to him. Hideyoshi Toyotomi was supposed to be one of Nobunaga's most trusted vassals. I guess I can trust that these people are the real thing. Hideyoshi Mitsuhide, leave us. I have something to discuss with Lesien. Um, no, I'm not going to marry you. Thank you. With me? Hideyoshi and Mitsuhide stepped aside as Nob Nobunaga approached. No, d don't leave me with that freak, please. D don't, leave don't leave me alone with that freak. Please. Your bold lies about coming from the future aside, you saved my life. I'm intrigued by you. You're a woman who carries fortune's favor. Of that, I am certain. I could argue that... My eyes widened. Nobunaga had slipped one arm around my waist, drawing me possessively towards him. Uh, um, uh, My eyes would widen from that as well. I'd be like... Um, what? I'd probably slap him in the face as well. Accidentally. How would you like to rule the world at my side? I told you I wasn't going to marry you, I meant that. What? what? With Nobunaga's strong arm around my waist and his offer ringing in my ears, rationality crumbled around me. Sorry, but I can't. Uh, I'm starting my dream job really, really soon and well, uh, bye! What? I pulled his arm off of me and began running. Oh god. I already clicked. Hideyoshi and Mitsuhide called after me, but that wasn't going to stop me. Oh god. I mean, but I guess that counts as treason? That's not good. <laughs> Grabbing my purse on my way out, I fled the small camp. I ran into a nearby forest, stopping only when it was quiet around me. I've run pretty far. I think I may be safe. Wait, safe from what? I'm still in the past, stuck in this crazy time period, alone and surrounded by madmen. I took out my copy of A Traveler's Guide to Japan, Hottest Warlords, for my purse. After Nobunaga's death, Mitsuhide launched a rebellion that gained him control of the country for a mere three days. Well, that's pathetic. His regime was quickly overthrown by the returning Hideyoshi Toyotomi. It's all right here in the book. Except now, Nobunaga Odai is alive and Mitsuhide's coup can't happen. That means history has changed? I couldn't have stood there and let Nobunaga die, but now there's no telling what repercussions will my, my actions will have on the future. Just then I heard the soft chiming of bells and dry leaves being crushed under someone's foot. Young lady, what are you doing in the woods this late at night? I'm just giving him a creepy voice. A weathered-looking man with a chiseled face walked towards me, smiling. Oh, that's not a good sign. A Buddhist monk? Oh, that's trouble. That's trouble. I am called Kenyo, and I am a traveling monk. Perhaps I can be of assistance to you. No. How about no? That's a much better voice, I must say. The Avenging Warrior Monk, Kenyo. Oh god, he has evil written all over his face. Thank you, but no thanks. I'm fine on my own. Can we start running again? I'm not, but I've got a bad feeling about this guy. 
Well, yeah, probably because he has a scar like all over his face. He fits the silhouette of the man I saw attack Nobunaga way too well for comfort. And is he covered in suit though? I held my breath as he took a long stride toward me, only to put his hand softly on my shoulder. You should return home quickly. Demons lurk in the woods at night. Oh god. Thank you for the warning. Goodbye. I didn't try to hide my fear as I pulled away from him and dashed off again. Creepy guys left and right. <laughs> no lights or street signs to tell me where I'm going. I really, really want this to be a dream. I clutched my purse to my chest and squeezed my eyes shut, desperately wishing I could make this all go away. Watch it! What now? Out of nowhere, a man grabbed me hard enough to pull me off my feet. Whoa, hey! I fell backwards onto the man, sending us both to the ground. Ooh, ooh, compromising positions. Ouch! Sorry! A well-built man with a handsome face was lying below me like an unhappy cushion. Better get off him. Whoa, are you crazy? Don't move! As I stood up, he did too, grabbing me from behind. Wind coming up from a great depth before he tugged at my hair. Ouch! That's my hair! My hair is sensitive! Yikes! I'm on a cliff! That is some drop! That was close! Thank you for saving me! Oh, that's too close! I turned around in his arms, our noses brushed together and I realized just how close his light brown eyes were. Uh... Um? I don't need thanks. Just give me some space, will you? Aww, he's cute. He's shy. R right. I guess I was staring, but he he's really good looking. I moved away from him, but the man caught my arm once more. Not that way. I'm just giving you some space. Well, watch it, that rock is loose. How would I know I'm a city girl? I don't know that shit. Can't you see that for yourself? Actually, I lack the preternatural ability to read the terrain like a ranger in a fantasy novel. Not that he'd understand. Look, I'm sorry alright, I'm having a difficult night. Hey, I'm not mad at you, okay? Sorry for being kinda rough. Come on, I'll help. He was smiling now, and this time he offered me his hand. Thanks. He comes off as a little awkward, but I feel like I can trust him. I took his hand. He led the two of us away from the cliff with deft steps. steps. What's this, Yuki? We've been here ten minutes and you've already found yourself a girl? Who is this? What's this, Yuki? We've been here ten minutes and you've already found yourself a girl? Who is this? A broad-shouldered man, a full head taller than Yuki and with a grin on his face met us at the edge of the forest. Don't tease me, Lord Shingen. She was about to dive off a cliff. It was an accident. I was running ahead without looking. That's all. Yeah? At night in the woods, you mean? What for? I was looking for a shortcut to my happy place. Hmm. Smoke from Honoyi and the woman all alone at night. I didn't do shit, I swear. I'm innocent. 
I, I really swear. Perhaps you're a ghost? Though you're the most beautiful ghost I've ever seen. Oh, he's a flirty one, isn't he? Oh, that voice. The Tiger of Kai. Shingen Takeda. Oh, the Tiger of Kai, though. That sounds, um... Spicy? I'm actually quite normal. I mean normal for a person, not a ghost. With his narrow, flirtatious eyes on mine, I faltered brushing off the compliment. Someone else joined us on the cliff. Who are all these people? Your ability to spew cheap pickup lines never ceases to amaze me. The god of war, Kenshin Urizugi. Remembers me of Game of Thrones, somehow. I just call it like I see it, Kenshin. Shingen and Kenshin? Two more famous names. Weren't they rivals? Another man arrived from the edge of the thicket. Strangely, his footsteps didn't make a sound. He's a ninja. Oh my god, he's he's the man from the um He's the man from the, the monument with the lab girls. I mean he wears glasses, which probably really wasn't that normal in that time. I don't remember what voice I gave him. My lords I've returned. Nobunaga's forces have extinguished the fires at Honoyi. Dressed, dressed for camouflage and ease of movement, with close fitting layers that won't rustle. He's an actual ninja. I don't even remember what voice I gave this dude. Thank you for your investigation. So I presume Nobunaga is alive then? Yes. They're not exactly celebrating that fact, are they? He's got the devil's look. Or he is the devil. That's a shifting mood if I ever saw one. So they don't like Nobunaga, but they do take him seriously. I thought about asking more when the man dressed like a ninja suddenly looked at me. Yeah, he recognizes me. You. Me? We happen to run into her here. Do you know this woman? No, I was mistaken. How come he's so... Like... It's like he's already living there for 10 years, at least. Though I spotted a village on the way here, she must be from there. I'll escort her home. Saving me? Moving quick, aren't we, Sasuke? Give the rest of us a chance, will you? Lord Chingen, please. You and the others should return to the city. Excusing himself, the ninja took my hand and led me back towards the forest. Hold on! You've got it wrong! I'm not from a village or anywhere near here! I know, I've been expecting you. Well, what does he mean by that? He's been expecting me? Once we were deep enough in the woods, the ninja stopped and lowered his mask. Do you recognize me now? Oh, hey! You know, not that I didn't recognize you by your glasses. Um, are you alright? Do you have an umbrella? Huh? Be careful, miss. That was a flashback. Med school student at the Honoyu Monument. Postgraduate in physics, not medicine, but I'm glad you remembered me. That makes things easier. So you ended up in the past too? Why are you a ninja? It's easiest if I start from the beginning. My name is Sasuke. And just like you, I come from the present. Or rather, the future. The swift striking storm. Sasuke Sarutobi. 
Sasuke slowly began to explain what had happened since our encounter at the stone monument. That explanation made my head spin. I sat down on a tree stump looking up at him as he finished. So that lightning strike caused space-time to warp around us and send us into the past? Yes, that is very simplified and condensed version of my current theory. We entered the wormhole at the same time, however, I arrived 40 years prior to you. In that time, I've learned that the Sengoku period, Japan's civil war, is different than the one we're familiar with. Different other than me saving Nobunaga? I listened rapidly to Sasuke's explanation. According to him, just like what had happened to Nobunaga and I, Sasuke had arrived at the date of Kenshino Uezugi's historical death. But Sasuke's quick thinking and knowledge of modern med medicine had ensured Kenshin's survival. Now he, like Nobunaga, was alive, but they weren't the only ones. Shingen Takeda, the tall flirt on the cliffs, was supposed to have died by this time too. In this strange place and time, he too was alive when he shouldn't be. I can't believe it, we've changed the past? To a degree. We we're in an alternate <laughs> we're in an alternate Sengoku period, not the one we know from school. Because of fluctuations in space-time, we're in a divergent timeline, one in which history will take a different course. Time travel, alternate histories, divergent timelines, it sounds like science fiction. I major in theoretical astrophysics at Kyoto University, specializing in wormholes and their potential for time travel. Well, I guess you just found uh, the project to graduate on. I'd conceived of a method for predicting the conditions for and patterns by which traversable wormholes manifested. That's why I was at the stone monument that day, to verify my method. I thought the people in this time were something else, but now I'm talking to a man who can predict wormholes. I've been looking for you here, expecting you must have travelled back in time as I did. I hadn't conceived of the possibility that you would arrive four years earlier. So this really isn't a dream then? I suppose you could say it's a dream for me. I get to see the famous men and women of the Sengoku with my own eyes. You're strangely chipper about this. My parents were huge history buffs. I got my name from Sasuke Sarutobi, the legendary ninja who served Yukimura Sanada. But you just said that that was your name. So technically we are in the same timeline. Because otherwise you wouldn't exist. That's weird. Or did he just grab the name of someone that really exists. That's a possibility as well. Oh, because that Sasuke is fictional, I've taken his place in this time that will let me keep my historical impact low. And were your parents secretly ninja too, or is that something you picked up while you were here? I studied that here. It seemed useful to pick up a marketable vocation. From astrophysicist to ninja. Strikingly quick at adapting. I shook off my shock. Sasuke put out his hand. Right now I'm employed with the men you saw earlier. Come with me, I promise I'll find a way to return us both to the present. Sasuke is a bit of an odd one, but he's my best shot for getting back home. I was ready to take his hand when... Lucien, where are you? Come out! That voice belongs to one of Nobunaga's men, Hideyoshi. I heard the sound of approaching horses. Sasuke grew grim. Without another word, he slipped into the shadows of the forest and out of my sight. He's just leaving me alone. He's just like, oh, fuck this shit, I'm out. Fuck. Wait, what? Don't disappear with your secret ninja tricks! What about a plan? 
But there was no time to call out to him. Two men on horseback arrived. One of them was Hideyoshi, and one of them is a cute new one. I searched the whole forest for you. I didn't ask you to. I wasn't in the mood to be sympathetic, especially when he'd driven off my ticket home. Hiding yourself for Lord Nobunaga for no reason whatsoever. How insolent can you get? No reason he asked me to conquer the world with him and didn't look like he was going to take no for an answer. The man on the other horse laughed. Ah, oh, it sounds like a sympathetic one already. I like it. <laughs> oh, it's the cute one. Hmm, what voice do I give him? Yo, Le Sien. Hm. A stalwart lass indeed. I've no doubt you're the woman who defied Lord Nobunaga. And you are? Someone else I'm supposed to recognize? The one-eyed man reached down for me. I'd be pleased if you did. But now is not the best time to talk. Hey, let me go! Effortlessly, he swooped me up and placed me on his horse. Wow. You know, these men really don't take personal space seriously. They also don't take female rights very seriously, I think. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bit close. He looks even cuter up close then. Tucked snugly against his chest, I had a fine view of his domineering smile. Oh yeah, they probably, uh, like I'm probably on uh, sideways on the horse. Because I'm probably wearing a skirt, a long skirt. Oh, that's very personal then. You know, then he's like, just sitting like this and I'm just sitting like that. Oh, okay. <sighs> Masamune date. Remember it, Lucien. I like him. He has attitude, but he's still friendly somehow. Right. Obviously, he's Masamune date. I'm way over quote on famous warlords tonight. Masamune is head of the noble date family of Osho. He's also allied with Lord Nobunaga, so show some respect. If Hideyoshi is thinking to impress me with that unnecessary bit of trivia, I have news for him. I don't give a fuck. Thank you both for the introduction. Could I be put down now? Settle down. You spook the horse. That was a weird horse. Don't I matter? I'm pretty spooked. Come to think of it, you do look a little spooked. But that didn't stop him from urging his horse forward with a snap of the reins and a shout. No! I want you to let me go! The horse quickly broke up into a run, and I was forced to cling to Masamune or fall off. I would choose the option to fall off. <sighs> Don't lose her, Masamune. Ah, oh, I get it, he's a reckless driver, isn't he? I won't. Hold on tight, Lucien. I'm not going with you guys. Nobunaga has already departed the camp. He ordered you brought to him. And that brat always gets what he wants. Hideyoshi riding behind us was clearly unhappy with that order. Yeah, I know, he just really wants to get rid of me. He's like, I don't give a shit about you. Get the fuck out. But everybody likes me. We need to ride fast if we're going to catch up. Don't fall off now. No, wait! Where are you taking me? I complained in vain as Masamune spurred the horse faster. We rode through the night until we arrived at our destination. It's like a fortress, castle and city all in one. We're here, Lucien. 
We're here in the Sien, Azuchi Castle, home of Oda forces. The real Azuchi Castle? It was destroyed not long after Nobunaga's death. Don't show yourself to Lord Nobunaga with that expression, you look like a gaping frog. I do not, and I haven't agreed to see him. So, you're a morning person, I'll keep that in mind. Masamune's choking words spoken right into my ear reminded me he's still holding me. Anyway, we're here, so put me down. Actually, I think not. I'm pretty happy with you right here. Well, I'm not. Masamune, our Lord Nobunaga has taken an interest in her. Keep your hands off her. Why does that matter? I like her too. Ooh. Ooh. Men don't thrive in the shadows of other men. In battle or in love. I like this dude. Uh, listen you two. Masamune's eyes shone with the delight of a tiger hunting prey. I wondered what that prey must feel like when... Hideyoshi! Welcome back! Oh god, he has a fan club. Hmm? A series of excited calls drew me back to my surroundings. Over here, Hideyoshi! Oh, Masamune, you're dashing as ever. Who's your friend? A crowd of waving and cheering women had lined up at the gate to welcome the two men back. How can you get this welcome every single time, Hideyoshi? Break a heart or two, will you? What do you take me for? With a shrug, Hideyoshi dismounted his horse and walked towards the crowd of women. I've told you there's no need to come greet me. There's no way. Oh god. There's no need to come all the way to the gate for me. What about your work? I finished early so I could see you when you came back. Hideyoshi, will you be staying long? I hope we'll have time to catch up. Are you sleeping with all these women? I guess not, he looks really honourable actually. Don't let me keep you waiting, I'll send a letter as soon as things settle down. Of course, take as long as you need. Still on Masamune's horse, I watched Hideyoshi astonished. So he's just a big sweetheart and not an ultra stiff paranoiac? That's how he normally is. I guess you're just special. He's nice to everyone but me. That makes me feel the opposite of special. It goes both ways. There aren't many women who don't fall for Hideyoshi at first sight. Masamune looked at me curiously. So, who are you, really? You know what? First of all, back off! Oh yeah, he's still holding me. Oh, that's creepy. Actually, it's quite cute. Me? I'm just a normal person, by my standards. As Masamune got closer, I stiffened up. But just then... Welcome back, Lord Hideyoshi, Lord Masamune. Standing in the shadows next to Mitsunari was a petite young man. A tussle of fawn-coloured hair on his head. He looks so innocent. Mitsunari must have returned with Nobunaga. Who's that man next to him? And well, as for Nobunaga, I'm sure he's waiting in the castle keep. Masamune, seeing Mitsunari and the young man up ahead, turned to me and smiled. Even Ieyasu came out to say hi. That's rare. Ieyasu? Ieyasu Togugawa is here? Right there, actually. He's the sourpuss next to Mitsunari. You should take this chance to say hi. Masamune helped me off the horse and led me by the hand through Hideyoshi's throng of admirers. We stopped at the gates where Mitsunari and the man who was supposed, supposedly Ieyasu Tokugawa waited. 
I've been expecting your arrival, Lady Lesien. The smile is ice cream on a hot day, but I have more important things to think about. Mitsunari, I don't have anything more to say to Nobunaga. She looks pitiful. Yeah, and you sound pretentious. The indomitable visionary, Iyasu Tokugawa. Iyasu talked right over me, delivering his harsh assessment with a disapproving frown. What well, fuck you? Your Lucien? Yes, so wow. Your Iyasu? What if I am? What if you were what? Ieyasu kept his ice-cold eyes fixed on me. Was the founder of Tokugawa's sh shogunate really such a little smut? He's pretty, like a doll, but that makes his peevish attitude even worse somehow. I get that. I get that. It's like the same in... Uh, I can't really have examples for real life, but when you're in see movies and you have like these very cutesy looking guys and then they have that little attitude and you're like oh god i can't stand them yeah yasu there's no way to greet someone can't you give them a smile at least hey even he's friendlier hideyoshi having broken away broken away from the women came up to us with a wry smile <laughs> can he I'm not sure I've ever seen him do it. What does your smile look like? Why is that important? Don't be unsociable. You need to let loose. Learn to smile and laugh. I'll help Hideyoshi. You take his left. S stop it! You are just annoying me. Three warlords are having a tickle fight. That's... Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Scrunching his face up, Iyashu scrambled out from under Hideyoshi and Masamune's tickling grasps. They all seem quite friendly with each other. Oh, a very inappropriate thought just went through my mind. I watched my mouth agape until Mitsunari turned to me and spoke in a low voice. Like Lord Masamune, Lord Ieyasu is also allies with Lord Nobunaga. He came at once, hearing the news of the assassination attempt. So that's why the who's who of the famous warlords are all here. Everyone? Shall we save the happy reunion until after our new arrivals get some rest? Save yourself, Mitsunari. I'm not remotely happy about any of this. Oh, my apologies. Then let's simply not stand around and talk outside. Lady Lucien, the room you'll be staying in is already prepared. Please, get some rest. Ignoring my earlier refusal, Mitsunari ushered me into the keep of Azushi Castle. I can just picture him like, come, come, up, up. I, I can picture that guy doing that, you know, like, you know, like, uh, like a hand wavering at the back and like, uh, get the girl in. Okay. Meanwhile, in the castle town below. Oh, it's Yuki, which we can't know. I didn't expect this to be such a cheerful place. Yuki looked around, taking stock of the pro prosperous town. Now where is Sasuke gone? I haven't heard from him since yesterday. Oh, that was someone else. Well, I'm sure he's fine. Oh no, it wasn't. He turned toward the main keep of Azuchi Castle. Determination tinged with vengeance pulled his youthful eyes. 
Okay, so I'm thinking Nobunaga did some some really bad shit, and um, Yuki wants revenge. Like I don't know, his parents got killed or something. That would be so typical. Justice is coming. I hope you're prepared, Nobunaga. Inside the castle, Mitsunari led me to a spacious and comfortable looking room. Lady Lucien, this room is yours to use as you like. I hope it's enough for you. It's more than enough. It's almost too much. And please, just call me Lucien. But you're a lady. And Lord Nobunaga's safe here. I couldn't possibly. It's really fine. I'm not used to titles and fancy treatments, and I don't need them. Then I agree, on the condition that you stay as familiar with me. Is that all right, Lucien? That's perfect, Mitsunari. I actually really like him. Not that I could say no to that smile. So I like two guys, like this Mitsunari guy. I love him. And that Masamune guy, oh, he's, he's awesome too. For two different reasons. Thank you. Now take your leisure. Or leisure. Someone will come to fetch you soon. Smiling politely, Mitsunari left the room and closed the door behind him. There's been no sign of Sasuke since last night. What exactly am I supposed to do? I sank to the floor and empty, emptied the contents of my purse before me. There was a traveler's guide to Japan's hottest warlords, my cell phone, wallet, house key, makeup bag, sewing kit. You know, if you want those people to believe you about coming from the future, why don't you show them the magazine, the cell phone? Well, mostly that. Like the makeup bag, maybe. You might have some stuff in there that's weird. And my test piece, Bersace, who looked up at me with warm acrylic eyes. I brought him as a sample of my sewing, along with my dress designs, to my job interview. He's been in my purse ever since. I was so excited to start my dream job. Why did this have to happen? I let out a long sigh, then I heard a tock sound from above. What was that? I looked up at the ceiling just in time to see a panel slide open. A familiar face appeared in the opening. Excuse me, Lucien. I'm not bothering you, am I? That's okay. Not at all. Did you follow me here? Yes. I hit myself when those men arrived and followed your trail. I'm so glad you did. Sasuke jumped down from the ceiling, landing silently. He pulled his mask down. And what, in watching you, I've pieced together much of what happened. You've gotten yourself into some trouble. I'm sure you've been through worse in your four years here. Yeah? I mean, it made you into a textbook ninja. There's trouble, and then there's trouble. That said, I forgot to tell you something important back in the forest. That would be good news. I mentioned I was researching a way for us to get home. Recently, I was able to confirm that the wormhole opens here at fixed periods. Really? Then that means... Please keep your voice down. I'm not supposed to be here and it would be bad if we were caught. Well, actually if I were caught. Right. Finding what is obviously an enemy ninja in your castle would be classically bad. I'll be concise. The next wormhole will provide our way home. A way to return to the future? Can I take the hot man with me? <laughs> uh. Leaving the rationale behind its rec recurrence aside, according to my data, the next traversable wormhole will appear in three months. Well, fuck. I'm still calculating its location, but chances are good that if we make contact with it, We'll return to the present. All you need to tell me is that we can get back. I'm so relieved. However, it's best if you spend these next three months here. Inazushi? Why don't I just come with you? 
We're in the midst of a chaotic civil war, one that's now further away from ending than the one in our timeline. Besides, Nobunaga and his men seem rather fond of you. I doubt they'd let you go easily. Yeah, they want to use me as their whore. You know, their classy whore. Yeah, give them their pension for hunting me like game animal. I'll check on you though. If you run into any trouble, send the smoke signal. You know, because everyone knows how to do that. You know, like, I mean, I can set shit on fire. Does that count as a smoke signal? I guess. Smoke signal. All right. I don't know how to do that yet, but I'll figure it out. One more thing. Don't get deeply involved with the people of this time. Oh, you sweet summer child. I am going to bang them all. Even the creepy ones. Cause that's how I roll. Deeply involved? Sazuke? I'm going to be in close contact with them for three months. Please. That is to say, don't fall in love. It might cloud your desire to return to the future. Oh, fuck that shit. I'm just taking whoever I like with me. You know, just like, you know, this time period is very violent. You're probably going to die. You wanna come to the future with me? Haha. <laughs> love? There's no worry of that happening. Have you talked to any of these people? Uh, uh have you talked to any of these people? They're quite cute. <laughs> Alright. I recommend you keep the fact that you come from the present a secret too. Well, about that... I might have... Uh, yes, right. Not that anyone believes. I mean, would believe it. I didn't say anything. Good thing the two people I told, Nobunaga and Mitsunari, thought I was joking or smoke adult. My employer is in the city below and I'm staying with him. I'll be able to come to your aid quickly. Your employer? What are you here for? But my question went unanswered as Sasuke's gaze shot to the door. Someone's here. Who is it? We'll speak more later. Farewell. Pulling up his mask with one hand, Sasuke vaulted out the open window with the other. Wait, wait, so you come in through the ceiling and you... Go out the window? How... Aren't people going to see that? Oh, it's that creep. Are you here to assassinate me? I see you weren't able to get away from Nobunaga after all. This one is alright, oh Mitsuhide Akeshi. He's calling for you. Nobunaga, that is. He wants to see you. Okay. Mitsuhide said no more and turned to go. I followed after him quickly. You warm up to me. I'm so charming. He betrayed Nobunaga in the history I know and arranged the assassination at Honohi. Maybe he did do less in this timeline. Like, I still don't trust him, but maybe things worked out a bit differently and he's less of an evil bitch? However, the person I saw attacking Nobunaga was different. That doesn't let Mitsuhide off the hook though. I was dragging my feet, forcing myself to walk to his, to this unwanted audience. Yeah, everyone's going to be there, aren't they? You'll damage them if you keep squeezing so tightly. What is he talking about? Mitsuhide lifted up one of my hands. I noticed I'd been squeezing my hands so tight my knuckles were white. Then, Mitsuhide took my borrowed hand and kissed it. I leapt back. I'm sorry, even though he's the evil guy, uh, this is so cute. Uh, I'm bad with these kind of stuff, this kind of stuff, it's just romantic. 
in a weird way? What do you think you're doing? Like in real life I would be like, that's creepy. Well actually, I don't know, that depends on the situation I guess. You know, kissing someone's hand? It really depends on the situation. If I feel safe, I would probably think it's super romantic. If I don't feel very safe, then yeah, it's just creepy. <laughs> That's the difference. Trying to calm you down. Just so you know, it didn't work. I beg your forgiveness. He actually seems a bit sweet. Oh, <laughs> it was the least sincere apology I've ever heard. Still smiling, Mitsuhide continued walking. Well, I don't know, I think deep down maybe he means it, but, you know... I know, I think he wants to seem tougher than he is. Is he just messing with me? Mitsuhide is dangerously unreadable. That's why probably the apology sounds so insincere, because it sounds fake. Okay, reminding myself to be wary, I followed Mitsuhide at a safe distance from then on. Deep in the castle, we came to a stop in front of a wall of gorgeously painted screens as they opened. You kept me waiting, Lucien. Um, I'm sorry? Nobunaga Oda said, alone on the dice. The power of his presence filled the room. Forming rows on either side of him were Hideyoshi Toyotomi, Mitsunari Ishida, Mitsuhide Akeshi, and Ieyasu Tokugawa. Masamune Date was there as well. Some of the country's brightest minds, strongest warlords, and infamous conquerors, all in one room. Don't just stand there. Approach me. Alright. Keeping a tender grip on my nerves, I approached Nobunaga and kneeled. Henceforth, you will reside in this castle and give your service to me. As I said, I have another job, so I must politely decline. None of that matters to me. All you need to do is say yes. His eyes are so cold. I was in a preca precarious situation and I didn't think Nobunaga was going to be so gracious if I ran again. My best shot for going home is to spend the next three months here. Yes, Lord Nobunaga. I have a question though. How exactly am I to serve you? However you like. Excuse me? Nobunaga took my wrist, drawing me nearer. His fingers, I noticed, were elegantly long. Your only duty is to stay nearby. That is what I need of you. His low voice was pleasant in my ears, though there wasn't a hint of kindness in his words. You will be my lucky charm, as I unify this nation and all that lies beyond. You want me around because I'm lucky? Yes. And don't fear. You shall be known as a princess from afar, and will be treated as such. Spend your days on makeup, or cards and games if it suits you. I'm just supposed to loaf around for three months doing girly things? No thank you, I'll go stir crazy if that's all I can do. What? Hm, I agree with you, Lucien. I'm the same way. So be it. Then I appoint you as my chatelaine. A chatelaine? That's the caretaker of a castle, right? What an excellent idea! Lucien, 
I'll provide you with all the support you need to get started. How could this wife probably be any use? It's Lord Nobunaga's decision, Ieyasu. Hold your tongue. Though only time will tell if we can trust her. He says you have to. Just keep an eye on her. You're good at that, right? She may surprise you. Then it's decided. Work hard and prove your worth to me, Lucien. I let them talk without interrupting. Nobunaga was watching me, that wicked smile playing across his face. I only have to put up with this for three months, plus I'll have Sazuke. Though having him around could hurt more than it helps, depending on why his bosses are here. Shingen Takeda and Kenshin Uezuki, right? They're unknown at this point. Especially the man that was with them, Yuki. Then again, if I start worrying now, I know I'll never stop. It's time to get serious. I won't let you down. I'll survive my time here and make it back to the present. Nobunaga took my chin in his hand, raising my eyes to his. He looked satisfied. This man is so touchy. I plan to take very good care of you, Lucien. From that moment on, I began my life in Azuchi Castle. I had prepared myself for anything. Except the possibility that I would actually find love here in these times of chaos and war. So they are all the choices, right? So that's... Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, if I have to do a top 5, um, well, Masamune is definitely in it. Uh, Mitsu... Mitsuri? Mitsuhide is also in it, strangely enough. Um, 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 that dude, I forgot his name. Oh, top 5 is really difficult actually. <laughs> so wait, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think he's in, he's in my top 5. <laughs> my top 3 would be Masamune, um, Mitsunari, and uh, Mitsuhide actually. I don't know, I'm just a sucker for bad guys sometimes, I guess, in stories, not in real life. So yeah, wow. This is the end, oh, I'm, I'm going to end it here, this is probably like two or three episodes long, or four, I don't know. But I'm going to post it all. So I'm sorry for that super long time on this game, but I... You know, I think it's a bit stupid to stop during the introduction. I feel like this was all introduction. So yeah, um, <laughs> I actually like this game. Um, it's just, yeah, it has a system of you can only read that many chapters a day and all that stuff. So it's a bit too... Like I would love to read it, but having to put the effort in all the stuff it's, it's really too much. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this um, long story and introduction of the characters. And um, yeah, this uh, I think this is a fun idea for a, a visual novel. Um, even though it's very cheesy, of course. But sometimes cheesy is nice to read. It's, I don't know. Sometimes it works. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I will be here next week with another uh, game for Mobile Monday. So it will normally be another game that isn't romantic uh, dating game. Because I try to kind of switch these up. Because I have so many dating games in this uh, 
in the list of stuff that I have to put, well, have to play, that I will play for this. So yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye!